Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Django Foundation series. In the last video, we saw how to set up the Django project. In this one, we're going to see how to set up a Django app and work around creating custom uh, endpoints for a web application. To continue, let's go to our command prompt and kill the server to execute some command to create the start app. Uh, to kill the server, you just have to press Ctrl C. So now in the place where manage.py exists, which is in my CMS project folder, I'm going to execute Python manage.py start app. And I need to give a name to my application that is part of this project. And I'm going to call this as blog. You can call this whatever you like, but calling it the name of whatever the functionality is going to encapsulate is always a good idea to essentially let you know or let other people who are going to maintain the project know what that particular app is about. So when I execute this command, I am going to actually create another folder called blog in my main project folder. And uh, in that folder are going to be a couple of files that are related to the application that we already saw earlier. So let's see uh, what this has done to our project folder. So I'll go visit my project folder. And in my project folder, now I can see a new folder called blog. And if I visit blog, I have a bunch of files that are already created when I executed the command. So the, the files that are created are admin.py, which is going to be an interface for creating admin files. And there is a file called apps.py, which is just a configuration file. And then we have models.py and views.py and test.py. Test.py is where all the tests related to our app is going to go. Models.py is where we write all the models and database related things. And views.py is where we are going to handle our own requests. The bunch of important files that we are going to keep going back over and over again are views.py, models.py, and in the main project configuration folder, urls.py. The first thing that we need to do is uh, whenever we essentially create a new application, we need to include it in our settings. So in the project configuration folder, we have settings.py. So we need to go to settings.py and include the name of the app that we just created, which is blog and let the project know that we have created a new app. So to do this, I'm just going to first open my code editor, uh, which is VS code. You can use any code editor of your choice. I'm just going to use VS code. The first thing that I need to do is I need to go to my settings.py and in my settings.py I have a Python list called installed apps which keeps a track of all the apps that are installed on my system. And here I'm going to create a new string called blog which is the name of the app that I just created. And uh, I'm going to save this file and once I've saved this file it's going to now know that blog is part of our application. And that's all we need to do to configure uh, configure a new app into our project. And uh, now we can go around actually writing some interesting things. So now let's write a custom view to handle a new endpoint. A view is essentially nothing but a Python function that can actually uh, handle the request that is received by the Django project. So I'm just going to write a new function called dev home and accept a default parameter called request, which is passed by the Django project to our function and essentially return a response. Uh, the response needs always needs to be a HTTP response type because that's how the internet works. And uh, we're gonna import the HTTP response type from the Django. So we're gonna type from django.http import HTTP response. So HTTP response is another function. So I'm going to call the function and just pass the response that I would like to send. So I'm just going to say, hey there, welcome to Django. What this is going to do is whenever somebody is going to visit a endpoint that is defined by us, uh, it's going to res uh, return, hey there, welcome to Django. But we've not defined a URL path at which this can be accessed. So now I'm going to go to urls.py that is part of my project configuration folder. And now here I'm going to first import the function that I just wrote. So the function is in the block folder. So I'm just going to say from blog dot views, import the name of the function, which is home. And then I need to add a new path to my URL patterns list, which is going to keep track of all the path that my project can handle. So to add a new path, I have to call the path function and pass two arguments to it. One is the URL and the second one is the function that gets called when that URL is visited, right? So I want this to be available on the home page. I'm just going to leave it empty. So I just want it to be available on the root domain. 
and then the function that gets called when we visit root domain is going to be the home function so I'm just going to be like home so this adds a new path and uh, now if I run server and visit the endpoint that is just the root domain it should call the home function and our home function in our views.py should return hey there welcome to Django so to test this let's go to our command prompt and run python manage.py run server and as soon as I run this I should be able to go to my root domain which is this if I refresh it should call the home function and return whatever we wrote this look this works like we expected it to work and now just to demonstrate that the urls.py essentially is handling our path so I can also change this path to something like home slash and what it what this does is this is this is getting defined from the root domain so whatever is going to come after this point so when we deploy this application whatever we are going to see this IP address and the port is going to get replaced by the domain name of your host right so the home represents what comes after your domain name which is slash home so now if I visit slash home this should come however since we do not have an empty root domain so if I'm going to visit the empty path which is the root domain and we do not have a URL to handle it we are going to get an error at that page which is 404 so whenever somebody is going to visit a URL that does not exist in this list the user is going to be thrown with 404 error so I hope this uh, video was helpful in writing your first view and understanding the entire request response cycle for Django